make the money. Don't let it make you. Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications for all the updates on the EIDL plus all the business and money mentor information that I am sharing with you regularly, okay? So let's get into it. What is all this fuss about on social media um, versus this $100,000 um, uh, forgiveness or for lack of better words, a stoppage of collection on EIDL loans that are less than $100,000? Wu Chow is messy. So the off Office of Inspector General is disagreeing with the SBA's management of EIDL loans that are less than $100,000. In their recommendation, they are suggesting that the SBA is not doing enough and that they want more done. Basically, this is what the disagreement between the two parties are, the SBA and the offers, office, why can't I say that, the Office of Inspector General. They feel that they look at this situation completely different. I know a lot of sole proprietors um, are feeling like they are being mistreated or not treated equally to other small business owners. I say again, as I said in many of my videos, there's no benefit to being a sole proprietor. But in this case, it looks like the SBA might be rooting for you. Um, the Office of Inspector General wants them to go in hard on sole proprietors. So let me just grab my notes here, y'all, because I got a lot of information to share with you, and I, it was so much, it was so good. Um, so in the document that was written from the Office of Inspector General that was referred to the SBA about the way they're they're collecting, first of all, the SBA is saying they aren't going to do certain types of collection. It will cost them $250 million, million per year to collect on these loans. So they are saying, no, we're not going to refer them to the Treasury. We're not going to sell them. Um, there were many recommendations that the OIG, that's the acronym for our Office of Inspector General, made to the SBA in regard to them. The SBA also were not happy with the terminology of failing or stopping collection because the SBA could have corrected them and say, no, we're not stopping collection. We're just not going to refer them to the Treasury. And the SBA is saying, we don't want to do that as of yet because we don't see that there's a value in that. The Treasury, over time with other SBA loans, have not been very successful in collection. So therefore, they aren't seeing the benefit to turning them over to the Treasury. For those of y'all who are asking me um, if they're going to go to the Treasury, apparently not. So as of today, the SBA said, no, we're not going to refer these debts to the Treasury. So let me finish with my notes, y'all. 3 million COVID EIDLs of totaling 100,000 or less were made to sole proprietors. So you're talking about 3 million loans are made solely to sole proprietors. That's a lot of people and the SBA is not interested in damaging them. One of the reasons that they noted in the uh, document in response to the OIG was they don't have the cover of an LLC or an Inc. And therefore, we don't feel like we should tackle them if we are going to tackle these other folks. The OIG is saying, no, get them, because basically the, the U.S. population trusted these people. And because they have proven that they aren't trustworthy, we need to go after them hard, is basically what the OIG says in the, um, the recommendation. So let me just give you all some numbers right here. So at as of May 2023, there were 118,461 loans that were 30 to 59 days late. For the dates for the dates that were 90 to 119 days late, there were 337,955 loans late. There were 6,404 in liquidation and charged off there were 68 thousand five hundred and ten the total amount of loans that were late as of may of 2023 were totaling one million three hundred and forty six thousand one hundred and sixty two so this is the number of loans as of may that were either 30 basically 30 days to charge off so the the sba is saying hey we just don't see 
the benefit in collecting because maybe these people are falling on hard times. Maybe they're in a bad financial situation. Maybe they are no longer operating. Things have happened. Really, the, the OIG really needs to understand that the world has changed and people aren't doing the same things that they used to do pre-COVID. So if you had a business that was thriving, I myself know I had a co-working space. Business completely plummeted after COVID because like everybody started working from home. And once we got used to being at home, it's hard to get people off their sofa to come into some place, especially when they can do it for free. But the SBA wanted to correct the OIG and let them know that they will continue to seek those who they feel are fraudulent. There were 11.2 billion loans flagged for fraud that were under $100,000. So that's a lot of loans, 11.2 billion. That's how many accounts were flagged. And so the OIG is saying, if you flag this many as being possibly fraudulent, how are you not referring these? Or why won't you decide to sell these loans? And they said that the SBA said, hey, we did a cost analysis. We see that it's going to cost us more money than we might actually collect per year. They were trying to implement some type of system, um, the SBA is right now, to try to locate those who got multiple loans that total over $100,000 because the OIG is saying, okay, well, this is your rule, anything under $100,000. If a person got three loans and they total over $100,000, they still need to be pursued versus, well, they have three separate loans at three amounts that don't total $100,000. So why aren't they being pursued? So Basically, if you really just want to know the, the, the end of the day truth, the SBA is still doing active collections. Um, again, I want to restate if you are a sole proprietor, unfortunately, it can go on your credit because you use your own self to operate as a business. Therefore, that money was given directly to you versus your business. Um, I, I really want to really implore you to get an LLC or an INC, INC so that you are protected. Um, these loans that were given to LLC holders or e corporations, their protection is their business. The loan was given to their business and not themselves personally. When they signed the documents, they signed as authorized people, not as the um, person who received the money. Their business received it. They just signed it off as a member of that business. So that is the difference. I know I got a couple comments today that felt like, um, COVID was kind of like pushed onto us through the government and now they're trying to make us pay this money. Um, well, you know, that's debatable how COVID got here. But the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of folks got money. A lot of folks cannot pay it. A lot of folks refuse to pay it just because they don't simply feel it's fair, um, especially their sole proprietor, that they are seemingly being punished in some ways. But I do want you to know, hey, the SBA is advocating for sole proprietors. So don't feel like you're in the dark or alone because they are definitely, definitely rooting for you um, because you don't have the protections that a lot of um, LLCs and inks had. Now, and here's the other piece. This is why it's so important to educate yourself on business and setting up a proper business for a properly structured business for yourself. Because when things like this happen, you are protected under certain guide, guidelines if you set up your business properly. So I want you to always think about that. If you have not done so, this was not a lesson in itself. This should be make sure you consult with someone if you do not know how to do this properly. I am also available for these types of um, sessions. I do business coaching. I do business setup um, and things like that. So you can check that out on my website at qroland.com. You can also, um, you know, follow me on all platforms and make sure you are subscribed to the channel for all the updates. So basically, yes, the SBA is actively collecting on loans that are $100,000. They have not done away with it. What they have said is that we are not currently going to refer them to the Treasury for collection in that way, although the OIG feels that's a perfect way. But in the past, again, through history of other SBA loans, they have not been successful. I saw another um, um, video on YouTube today that 
said that they've only been able to collect $65,000 out of millions. I think it was 20 something million dollars out of one type of disaster loan that was given some time ago. So they are finding that people don't pay through the treasury. Um, and as a self-employed person, whether you're a sole proprietor, LLC, or an Inc., it is very difficult to get people um, for wage garnishment because there are no wages. So it's just impossible. So the only way that they can try to collect any funds through the treasury would be through like a disability or um, a tax return or something like that. And sometimes that just yields very little, especially for self-employed self folks. So this is your answer. If you do not understand, I hope you take a look at the document. You can find this document online. I will paste the link right here in the bottom um, so, you, so you can check it out yourself if you would like to read the entire document. It has a lot of information, but it's good information. It's very informative. So check it out when you get a chance. If you um, have any questions, leave me a question or comment. I'm happy to do these types of videos because I love to make sure that you know what's going on. Um, again, if you need to set up any private time with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can go to my website, set that up at qrolling.com. You can also follow me on all platforms and make sure you are subscribed to my channel. Remember always, make the money, but don't let the money make you. Thank mm -hmm. you.